Hello everyone and welcome to the 3D Printer Vlog. This is your host Michael and today we are going to be wrapping up on the uh, printer installation thing here. Basically what I have done is I've put everything back together. However, when I tried to home all the axes, the uh, I think so yeah, this would be the Y axis in stock got crushed by because this the actual carriage was moving too fast. So I'm gonna have to tune some software and I had to do a quick repair. I had to Gorilla Glue the switch back into place because it just got bent back. I had to uh, refurbish it a little bit here. So this is why I have this uh, vice contraption arrangement. Let's zoom in here a bit. So yeah, that's pretty dry now. I just had to clear out the excess Gorilla Glue. I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall that and I'm gonna try to see if I can uh, reprogram the software to where, the, uh, where it homes the axis. It doesn't go so fast to where it you know, aggressively smacks in because this thing was zooming. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim off th this excess here, try not to cut myself. So now I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble this bit. And then install it back onto the printer. Let's see if our end stop will uh, meet properly. So it's a little too low, which I think are, is the problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust this bolt here because I think it was smacking into the circuit board, which is pushing everything back. There we go. So that looks pretty nice. Now I'm gonna go ahead and work on the software as well as trying to level the actual bed. Sorry for the horrible glare. But as you can see, got the custom firmware updated and ready to go. There's only one thing I need to uh, set in the firmware which is the hot and like temperature tuning. Um, and then of course I broke or I busted the uh, Z in stop because it actually tried to move up too fast. Well, it just wasn't, uh, the Z in stop was brought down too much. I haven't actually set it yet. So yeah, I tried, it actually tried to home uh, before I even had that tuned properly. So yeah, that kind of uh, wrecked things a bit, but I, Hopefully everything um, should be taken care of once I get this sucker glued up here and hopefully I don't have to do this one. I might as well do it just to be safe at some point. But for now, I think we should be good. So I'm gonna wait for that glue to dry uh, probably another day here. Other than that, that's pretty much good to go. Tuned up some more things with the actual uh, stepper motors to set the micro stepping to the correct settings and all that. So yep, we, only, we have very few things until we're actually finished with this printer to do. All right, everybody, it's been a few days here, um, almost a week, I would say, until I, or since the last video log deal, and uh, pretty much I have done a few, good bit of changes with the firmware, get everything drilled down. Right now I'm calibrating the bed, which is taking forever, so while I'm waiting on that, just want to give you all an update. As you can see, I bought some smaller binder clips to... Uh, reduce the amount of lost space in the bed because these bigger ones the print head will crash into them so i have to distance it away from it also got the uh, print head calibrated too earlier so good date we're good on that at least so had to make some minor repairs because i was breaking things also miswired both the uh, z and the y end stops at least i plugged them in wrong when i redid the wiring so that uh cost me a bit of time trying to figure out that little gremlin but the uh the z lead screws are good to go all i need to really do is level the bed at this point here and i should be done with all the hardware calibration uh yeah and then of course i'm just doing the uh, bed calibration here also uh I had to replace the led strip because the previous one i wrecked it while in in or er, reinserting the h bar so that's brand new here, a lot brighter because it's a, uh, I guess, 600 LED per meter thing. Also got this other little clamp installed here, so this will move freely without, uh, it won't snag at all from now on, which is awesome. So as you can see, I have one of the plexiglass pieces that I cut in one of the earlier episodes here. I really am only able to use this front piece because the other pieces, uh, Basically, the way I modified the printer here in the past uh, few weeks here has made it impossible for me to mount those. So I'm just going to have to settle with this piece alone, which is okay because I'm going to just be using uh, some aluminum reflectix insulation, which I'll show you in a bit for the rest of the sides. And of course, I'll be insulating the uh, enclosure around it. But uh, essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to clamp these this onto the printer so I can take it off easily. I haven't really come up with like a particular hinge system. I may do, I'll probably do that sometime in the actual future, but in terms of like a permanent enclosure, 
This is uh, not it. It's a, definitely a temporary enclosure. Now, this has a bit of a built-up static and some like plexi, uh, basically, bits. So I'm going to use a dryer sheet here, just wipe those off. And that'll also remove any sort of static, which this seems to uh, harbor here as well. I'm going to keep the masking tape on just so, because some of the sides are cracked. Yeah, you can hear that static go crazy. But yeah, uh, yeah, some of the sides are indeed cracked. So yeah, I'm just going to protect them a little better, especially with these clamps on it. So just to show you all a bit of a mock-up here, it'll go something kind of like this. So it'll keep the uh, front of the printer insulated, at least. I had to uh, insulate the actual cable for the LCD because the stepper motors were somehow interfering with it. So I got this aluminum tape. I've just been taping it up and kind of isolating it from this other stepper motor cable I had it with earlier. Well, there you have it, folks. Everything is good to go. The LCD was still giving me some weird distortion problems, so I fully wrapped the cable proper. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to mount this on the rack inside of the bathroom next to the other printer. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some Reflectix insulation. Let's go ahead and skip over to the bathroom. I'll show you our prep for this real quick. So I have the space uh, cleared out for the other printer here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this Reflectix on the floor down there, and I'm going to basically uh, just cover these areas with it. I'm gonna leave a gap in the front, of course, and, and I'll make it so I can actually uh, like fold, fold it up and make it more accessible. I'll probably clamp it on the corners in some form or fashion, but yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and set the camera up, and I'm gonna time-lapse this here. So pretty much just have to line the all sides with this here. So I'm gonna go ahead and repeat the process. And I'll uh, cut back when I'm finished taking it. Basically I'm just zip tying it to the actual frame as you can see. I've got a couple zip ties up here to mock it up. Gotta figure out how I'm gonna be doing the tubing with the other printers. I'll cut back to when I have this all finished. All right, as you can see, I have finished the enclosure. Try to get a bit of a, uh, there we go, that works. So see me in the mirror and there we go. There is our closure back there. I just have the front pretty open right now. Um, I'm gonna print the printer on and then I'll make like little side pieces. I'll mock those up, but pretty much got up, got everything up, down, sideways, this front thing that'll uh, cover the top uncovered part of the printer. And yep, this is pretty much ready for the transplant here. So I uh, just still doing a bit of tweaking calibrating, said I was done, but I wasn't really satisfied with the actual bed leveling. There's a bit of tweaking that I had to do, quite a bit really to get it done proper. But now it's done pretty well. As you can see, I got the uh, the extruder set up properly. It's good to go, I had to uh, calibrate the steps per millimeter. Apparently with the Core XY setup, you have to double each stepper value, even the Z and the extruder even though you'd think it would just be X and Y just due to the way that the motors are doubled up. But I digress. I want to talk about the uh, bed leveling situation here real quick. Uh, one thing you need to check is you need to make sure that both of these uh, frame rails here are uh, lined up properly. This one was out a little bit too much, so the screws were at an angle, which was causing some issues where it was actually, whenever I would tighten the, this screw up, this or this end screw up here, the corner would actually lift up. I originally thought that was something to do with maybe like a something not being rigid enough or maybe these back pieces here, but I got these tension up as tight as I can, so that doesn't seem to be the issue. Uh, it's more than likely due to the fact that it's more of a combination of, yeah, just the, uh, the actual bowing out. And, of course, it doesn't help that these uh, ends weren't cut that properly. So I'm just making best or making do with the best I have here right now. I think I can get everything taken care of. I just need to make sure everything is lined up. So far, so good, though. I'm really making progress here, and hopefully... I should have everything leveled by the end of tonight so I can get this printer installed and of course up, up and running. Alrighty here folks, don't know why the screen's coming up so purple, but this is actually finished now. 
I have everything wired up. The other printer is uh, going away, print out something. And yep, well, let's go ahead and start our new print here. Again, I do not know why this is um, so purple. As you can see, it's a bit rough on the first layer here. I think I just need to change some extrusion settings, although I'm using Kiss Slicer, so um, yeah, I couldn't get Simplify 3D to work right the first time. And that was kind of, it had an accident like the second or third time I tried, so that's what that's down there. So I need to work on like the extrusion settings. Not exactly perfect, but it is printing something. Now, hopefully it'll smooth out after this first layer. It looks like it's just over extruding like crazy, so. We shall see here, but yep, it's definitely looking promising here. A lot more uh, settings to be tweaked, obviously, but it's uh, looking pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and conclude this episode here because this has been at least um, almost a month worth of uh, just messing around with this printer trying to get it finished. And it, I consider this as, you know... A semi-working state like I said some more refinement has to be done another big thing that needs to be happening is these two uh, sections here so these two sections uh, they need to be bright actually yeah, these two like channels come out they need to be reinforced a little bit better right now they um, it's really easy to like knock them out of alignment by just simply like pressing down on them or just you know rocking them about uh, the printer doesn't seem to do it too bad or or affect it too bad so it can print but yeah there's still a lot left to be done here in this guy so yep gonna create some sort of bracket bars probably get some better uh, reinforcements for these guys like something metal more than likely so, and I'll probably get some more steel reinforcements here as well as um, try to build a better enclosure for this thing ultimately but I will uh, upload the updated Marlin files I had to switch the uh, settings for the bed to not use that PID tuning stuff just because it was uh, I had the wrong relay I have a non-solid state relay so if I'm gonna order a probably order a better relay here in the future just because it's kind of dips in between like 88 and 90 degrees so I'm not a huge fan of that but I just want to thank you all for watching. If you hadn't, haven't already, go ahead and hit that like button, consider subscribing, and check out some other videos here as well. And have a great day.